Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to the continuation of my Unity 3D tutorial on how to make a 2D tile map. And things are going pretty swimmingly. We've got a great sort of plane being produced dynamically for us uh, with our world map, and that is great. But what we want is an ability to... And we've even got it so that it's running in the editor. I don't have to hit play, it will generate the world. Uh, but it will only do it once when I actually drop the object in. What I would quite like is for it to have a button over here in the inspector so that when I change these values, I can tell it to regenerate the map. So we're going to go and do that. Now, there's a few little sort of gotchas and things. One of the big things is the editor script needs to be in a in a folder called editor. I might, I'm not wrong, am I? I'm pretty sure. Tell you what, we'll, we'll build it out here first and then we'll almost certainly have to move it into an editor folder. So we're going to call this uh, and we can call this basically anything we want, but I'm going to call this uh, tile map mm, editor is pretty common, inspector is possible. We'll say inspector. Tile map inspector. Now, this is going to start off, it's going to build it as a standard sort of mono behavior object with these sorts of things. Things have got to change a little bit. Uh, first of all, it's not derived from mono behavior. Well, actually, first of all, we, the using Unity engine is not what we need. We actually need using, oh, come on, <laughs> Unity Editor. That's what we need first of all. Now, these things you may or may not need. In fact, like it always adds system collections. A lot of times you don't need these in your script at all. You can remove that. And you may not need Unity Engine at all either if you don't need to call on certain functions. We might as well leave it in. It doesn't really hurt us at this juncture. But what we need to do is change this. It's not a mono behavior is derived from editor, the editor class. And we can get rid of these. And it's going to have a function. It's a public, I think it's an override, because it's a virtual function. I'm not sure if you need the actual override keyword, um, but I think you do. And then on inspector GUI. And then we do stuff. Um, and what this will do is this will allow us, this is just like the on GUI command that you're used to for having GUI uh, objects on the screen, but in this case it's part of the inspector GUI and it's going to be added here. But how does it know that this tile map inspector is meant to add a button to our tile map script as opposed to anything else? Well, we use one of these other sort of uh, instructions over here and we specify this is a custom editor for objects with a type of tile map. So now this will appear here. Oh wow, it actually doesn't have to be an editor subfolder. I think that may just be for JavaScript things. Instance of tile map inspector couldn't be created because there's no script with that name. So that's an odd error. Let's go and create the editor folder and see what happens. Move it there. Select this. Clear all the errors. Because now it's just blank. It randomly decided. Oh, reloaded because it, it lost the script. Let me do a recompile here and see what's what. Oh, do we have to call the super? I think we might have to do that. Okay, so apparently everything does seem to be working at this time. Uh, so we do need to have it in the editor subfolder, which is what I thought. Otherwise you get the weird uh, errors. Just like you need, um, there's the other magic folder is the resources folder. And also plugins if you're working with JavaScript. Uh, plugin subfolder I don't think is required if you're working with C Sharp. But now it's running, and it's running this here. Uh, unfortunately, this completely overrides the original. So what we want to do is, oh god, I do too many programming languages. Is it super? Or is it base? Is it super dot on inspector? Oh god, I, I run too many programming languages. Um, oh, C sharp uh, override super? 
Yeah. Super is more of a Java thing, isn't it? Base dot. All right. Whoa. Base dot. Uh -huh. On inspector GUI. Okay. So now we should get our standard GUI back in. This is one of the reasons I was not planning on doing this. I hadn't done the. Uh, because it's not something I do very often, but you, this is the sort of thing you kind of do once and then you just keep using and it's great. Um, so there we go. So now we have our original inspectors back in, which is good. We want that. We just want to be able to add to it now. And so we will use very simple kind of GUI type stuff, except instead of, uh, you, you know, you may have used GUI layout before. Well, this time around, we're going to use editor GUI layout. Because I hit tab too quickly because there's editor GUI and then there's editor GUI layout and that makes things really awesome so we are going to do this and we're going to create a button not a button well I've done this before editor GUI dot button all right now I'm very confused uh, Unity editor uh, inspector button. Create a button in the inspector. Come on, this is not complicated. But these are the things you Google when you're doing the search. Around your phone. Oh, you can just use a GUI layout. Oh, the editor GUI functions are just the specific functions for the GUI or for the editor type stuff, the inspector type stuff. But um, and actually, what we could apparently do here is do a draw default inspector, which I hadn't realized. So is this really the same as that? Indeed it is. I don't know. I still like calling the base for whatever reason. It seems to make more sense, but I guess this will be fine. And then, so if GUI layout dot button, and we're going to call it... Um, regenerate we're gonna do something so if that button gets clicked so let's make sure the button actually shows up there we go now we have a regenerate button it doesn't do anything yet but that's okay so what we want to do at this point is we want to say to this tile map hey rebuild and we know the function is called build mesh we will have to change this to a public right build mesh so we want to call build mesh but on what well what we need to do is we actually have something called the target built in here. So um, literally, like, we have target. Now target, I believe, again, on my auto completion or my, my pop ups not working properly, but I believe is a generic object type. So we have to cast this to tile map. And if I want, I could cache this like this. I could I could cache it somewhere else if I wanted to. Um, let's do it. Just do it this way. It's fine. And then I can call tile map dot build mesh. So, all that to get us to the point where I could change my tile size back to 1, regenerate. Change it to 5, regenerate. Try a 2, that's good. Let's go back to a 5 and change the size. Let's make it square. Regenerate. Looks good. All right. Regenerate. Boom. Now, again, at some point, yeah, I was going to say, you'll get this cleaned up leaked objects in scene since no game object component or manager is referencing them. This is not a bad thing. It's a, it's a notice that I, I, I don't know if it needs to exist, uh, but it's there. And the reason is that as we call build mesh over and over and over, um, our old mesh is not technically being destroyed. It's not really being leaked. It's just being garbage collected. We're, you know, because our mesh filter dot mesh had some new mesh sitting in memory so technically what we could do is we could destroy the old one and then build this one um, but then there's a, some weirdness because in the editor saying destroy something doesn't really work the, the same way you want to use destroy immediate which is something that's sketchy to use when you're outside of the editor you know what it's fine. It's going to get garbage collected. Everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about. So there's just a little bit of a button to make your life easier. Um, and you can do quite a bit more with this if you actually do use the um, uh, editor, editor GUI layout dot um, 
I guess we'd have to do the, the begins, wouldn't we? Well, what if we just use editor GUI? Oh, but then we have to give it coordinates. Layout dot begin area, begin vertical. Oh, there's no begin area. Well, that's interesting. So we can just do this. I'm just trying to give a demo for, I don't know what reason. Uh, end vertical, editor, GUI, layout, dot, and then, you know, do you want a slider? Um, that goes from, so serialized property, yeah, we have to feed it a property in there. Or do we? Current value, we're going to give it a current value of 0.5. Uh, the left is 0. The right goes all the way to, let's say, a 2.0. Um, and we don't need to pass in any options. Uh, or can we just pass it a null? I'm not even sure that we need this now. There we go. So now we've got a slider. doesn't do anything. In fact, it won't even move because uh, we've got the five hard-coded in there. But we could do something like float uh, value equals 0.5f and pass it the v and then set the v to the result. And then all of a sudden we have a slider that we've customized in here to do whatever the heck we want. You know, there's, there's a lot of power and a lot of function in here. When you're making a sort of bigger and bigger games, creating these editor inspectors, these custom inspectors, makes your life so much easier. So, you know, keep this sort of thing in mind. Uh, certainly the button's going to work out well for us, but we don't obviously need this in any way whatsoever. So that's it. This video is a little shorter, but I just wanted to talk about custom inspector windows. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.